the Lord, saints of God, Pastor Al Matlock here once again, New Horizon Baptist Church. I'm so excited, man. I, I pray that God has been blessing you with the word of God. I pray that you're um, hearing from God in this series. It's time to take your medicine. How many of you agree with that? It's time to take your medicine. That's the word of God, y'all. The word of faith and the word of God is our medicine. Amen. Jesus Christ is our medicine. The bottle of the oil, the, the, the prayed and blessed oil is our medicine. Now, we don't uh, say you don't have to, if the doctor prescribes something to you and you're under medic, doctor's watch or whatever care, that's fine, but make sure you pray over it. Make sure you give it to God first. Amen. So we get ready to go back into the service and to um, deal with this topic. It's time to take your medicine. So hear what God has to say. Be blessed, be encouraged, and we'll see you on the flip side. Don't forget, come experience the love and the power of God. You want to see a supernatural move of God. Notice what he says. He, he put the spittle and the clay on the blind man's eyes. But watch this in the verse 7. This is very important. I, you need to catch this. He says, and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. You got to catch this, saints of God. Some of the reasons why we haven't been getting our healing manifested. We already healed, but the manifestation of it, we haven't been receiving it. Because watch this. We haven't followed instructions of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost tells you to do one thing, you do another. The Holy Ghost instructs you and gives you an assignment and you refuse to do it. Mm, mm, mm. Watch this. He told him, he didn't just say, I'm going to put the clay on your eyes and you're going to be healed. No, he gave him instructions to do something by faith after he applied the spittle. Here it is, saints of God. You got to operate by faith. You want to see deliverance? You got to do something. You just can't sit there and wait for every supernatural miracle to happen for you. And you don't want to pray. You don't want to uh, uh, seek God's face. You don't want to read his word. You want to have to operate in faith. And watch this. You got to you gotta read his word by faith. Even when you don't feel like it sometimes, just pick it up and read it and say, by faith, God, you're going to speak to me. You're going to say something. Some of you got to pray by faith. I know your day's been long, you've been working, and you're taking care of the kids and the grandkids and the nieces and nephews and even the husbands and wife, and I know all this stuff is going on, but you got to put some time away so that you can uh, allow your faith to grow. By faith, you got to do a lot of this stuff. That's, that's our walk as Christians. You think, you think our natural flesh want to pray every day? Do you think our natural flesh want to come to church on Sunday? Or a Bible study on Wednesday, your flesh will lay there and watch every show on TV, every football game, every basketball game, and won't even think about the things of God. But by faith, you got to do what you got to do from your spirit. So he gave this man instruction. He just didn't give him a shoe and say, okay, I'm going to put this salve on your eyes and you're going to be healed. No, show me you want to be healed. So he told him to get up and go to the pool. Now watch this. Now I'm blind. I'm blind, but I got, he told me I got to find my way to the pool of Salon. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I know it don't look good for you, and I know it don't feel good for you, but you got to get up out of that, that, that seat of despair. You got to get up out of that seat of pity. You got to get up out of that seat of, uh, of feeling bad for yourself, and you got to get up and do something for God. He told him to get up and go to the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way. Notice this. The blind man didn't complain. He didn't start saying, God, I can't see. I've been, I've been blind all my life. How am I going to get to the pool? Can somebody take me? Can You know, he didn't do none of that. The scripture said he got up and he went. He was obedient. He did what Jesus told him to do. How many of you are doing what Jesus is telling you to do? How many of you are doing what God is telling you to do? Come on, saints of God. A lot of folks sitting back just chilling. Even in this, this season that we're in, this season of coronavirus. Listen, we should be on fire. We should be witnessing to our family. We should be talking to, I don't care, anybody you, even if you got your mask on, still tell them that Jesus loves them. I had to tell, I went shopping uh, yesterday. I had to go to the store and get some things. And, I, and, and God didn't give me no a big 
message for this person. He didn't give me no big uh, sermon or prophecy for this person. But know what he told me to tell him? Jesus loved me. And a young lady, soon as I said it, it opened up her eyes and she said, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. She said, this is the second time somebody said that to me. Get out of the norm. And like I said, he didn't get, that's all he told me to do. And I did that. I was obedient to that. But the point I'm making is whatever God tells us to do, even if it don't look like you can do it, this man is blind. He has nobody to walk him. He has nobody to take him to the pool. But the scripture says he went his way. He didn't wait. He didn't complain. He operated. He operated in the spirit of faith and obedience. That's what we have to do, saints. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with in your body, in your mind, in your finances, operate in a spirit of faith and obedience to God's word and watch God get the glory. Come on, come on. He'll get the glory. But a lot of times, like I said, we lag back we get comfortable, we get complacent, we just are so, we so content. No, I'm, I, man, I'm never content. I mean, I'm content, like the scripture said, in, in, in the state that I'm in, but I'm always striving to do better. I'm always striving to do more. And that's what we have to be, saints. So watch this. He was obedient to what Jesus told him to do. And he went to the pool of Siloam. And watch this. His, the scripture said he went his way. Therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Here it is. He was obedient. He operated in faith. Now, mind you, he was blind all his life. But he was obedient to Jesus. He operated in faith. And his healing manifested itself. Come on, this man was blind all his life. It had to be something a uh, 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 critical for it to be he never saw anything his whole life he never saw he was blind from his from a, from a baby but because of his obedience because of his faithfulness Jesus Christ watch this gave him the instructions oh this is so powerful he gave him instructions to his healing ah that's good right there, Shelton. He gave him instructions to his health. He didn't put hands on him. He didn't say, uh, blind eyes open. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't say, uh, uh, open your eyes and you'll see. No, Jesus just gave him instructions. See, this is so good. This is so good. Say, Jesus will give you instructions for your success. He will give you instructions for your healing. He will give you instructions for your, uh, uh, your prosperity. See, it may not come like you want it to come, but if you will operate in faith and operate in obedience, here comes your miracle. The one you've been praying for for the last five years or 10 years, but you finally decided to line up by faith and with obedience. Before you was just moaning and crying and complaining and, and going to God, watch this with the same prayer over and over again. But he said, no, I heard you the first time. Once you pray, if you pray believing, come on, saints, if you pray believe, believing, you will have whatsoever you say. Man, oh man. This is some good stuff here. So he operated in faith. He operated in obedience. And the Bible says he came seeing. He came seen. The Lord is saying to you today, you want your manifestation to, to come? You want your blind eyes opening in the spirit? Be obedient. Trust God. Walk by faith and not by sight, what you see in the natural. His deliverance came out of his obedience. Our deliverance and our healing can manifest itself if we just be obedient. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today you are hearing a word that should increase your faith. 
it should inspire to say, listen, you know, I've been trying it my way for so long. I've been trying it my way. I've been uh, uh, leaning to my own understanding for so long. It seemed like I just can't get a breakthrough. Change what you've been doing. Change your program up. Change your belief system up. Turn your mind around. Change your mind. Let's do it God's way. And let's see, let's, let's see if this word is really as true as it said it is. Let's see if this word is really trustworthy like it said. It is. God said his word is the only infallible word on this planet. There's no word that supersedes his word. And if he said we can walk by faith and not by sight and receive our healing and receive our deliverance, why don't we try that? Stop worrying. Stop complaining. Stop being so anxious, so intimidated. No, no, you're a child of the most high God. Can you imagine this individual if he would have clammed up and said, Jesus, I, 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 I've been blind all my life. Who's going to take me to the pool? How am I going to get there? He didn't say none of that. He did what Jesus told him to do. I can see him now just probably feeling this way, trying to get there. But watch this. The scripture says he got there and he came up seen. Now, you're always going to have, I got to share this with you too. You're always going to have naysayers, unbelievers, doubters when God is operating in your life. Notice what it said. It said the very same neighbors who knew his parents and knew him. It says, therefore, and the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, not, is this not he that sat in bed? Instead of them being excited about his healing, instead of them being excited that he can see, they looking at what he used to do. Ah, oh, my God. Isn't that amazing? Folk going to look at your past. They're going to try to uh, uh, talk about your past and what you used to do and, and how you used to act and how you used to respond and how you used to look and all that. But you, you can just politely smile and laugh or whatever you want to do and said, I am not that same person. Yes, maybe I did used to beg, but watch this. I know he said, I can see now. Help me, Holy Ghost. Maybe I used to ask for alms, but I can see now. I can see I've been delivered. I've been set free. And that's just like you, saints. You've been delivered. You've been set free. God has opened up your spiritual eyes. You walk in that glory. You walk in that proudness, that spiritual proudness to know that God has healed you. He has opened up your eyes. Now you don't think like you used to think. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't act like you used to act. You don't respond to, to the uh, uh, sickness and poverty like you used to. You combat it with the word of God. So here come the naysayers saying, isn't this he that was blind and he used to, he used to beg? Some even said, this is the other said, he is like him. But he said, this is what I like about it. He said, I am he. That's how we got to get saints of God. They may doubt. They may have unbelief. They may not believe what that happened in your life. But you say, no, this is me. Yes, I'm the one that used to be on the drugs. Yes, I'm the one that used to do the cocaine. Yes, I'm the one that used to be the hustler. Yes, I'm the one that used to run the streets. Yes, I'm the one that used to be the, the gambler on the block. Yes, I used to do all that. But now I am he that has been, my eyes has been opened. Mm -mm -mm. God has turned my life around. Any man being Christ Jesus. He is a new creature. I am, yes, I was that one, but now I am he, the one who has been set free, the one who has been delivered, the one who has been healed, the one who has been, been made prosperous. Yes, I was he, but I am not he anymore. I'm not that same person. I've been delivered. I've been set free. That's what I like about him. He let them know, yeah, they, they thought he was somebody else, and they thought he was a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, Maybe someone like him, but he said, no, I am he. So watch this. They questioned him. They said, therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? See, it's going to be a point where your life has been so changed. It's been so re uh, 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 recreated. And it's going to be to the point you keep walking by faith. You keep trusting God. You keep standing on his word. You keep sowing his word. You keep, you keep praising him and worshiping him. It's going to be a point where people are not 
going to be able to recognize you. They're going to, they're going to kind of vaguely recognize you. They're going to say, now, isn't that the one that used to do this? But, but your light is shining, so now they gotta, they're going to see a difference. See, that's why, that's why I say it's time to take our medicine because this medicine that we take in God's word is going to bring about a newness in our life. It's going to bring about a newness how we look. It's going to bring about a newness how we trust God, how we believe God, how we stand on his word. It's time to take your medicine, saints. He says, therefore they said unto him, how were thy eyes open? This is amazing. How was your life changed, Pastor Matlock? How was your life changed, Sister Pat Chu, Sister Kim Chu, Brother Downey, Sister Downey, Lady Matlock, Deacon Ron, Sister Elaine? How was your life changed, Brother Ron? How was your life changed, praise team? Who did this? See, this is, this is important. How, ushers, deaconess, how was your life changed? It was Jesus. See, we got to be bold. Let the world know it was Jesus. I couldn't have made it out of my mess by myself. I couldn't have got out of what I was into by myself. It had to be the grace of God. It had to be the power of God. It had to be Jesus Christ. That's how his eyes were open. Because he was obedient to what Jesus told him to do. He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. Notice how he answered. He said, it was a man called Jesus. He didn't touch me. He didn't speak to my eyes. But watch this. He made a form of medicine. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That clay and that spittle became a medicine for his blinded eyes. It's time to take your medicine. <laughs> I know this is too heavy for some people, but we're going to be all right. We're going to understand it by and by. That's why I say don't get, don't get bent out of shape if you got to apply medicine here. But just put the blood of Jesus Christ on it with that medicine. Just put the blood of Jesus Christ when you take that pill. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Take it in Jesus' name. That's if you have to. But watch this. You know me. I'm not saying that you have to. Because I, I try to stay away from as much medicine in the, that this world has to offer as I possibly can. Apply the word. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Apply his broken body. So he says, he answered and said unto the, a man that is called Jesus, made clay and anointed my eyes, and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. Notice the steps. He heard Jesus. He followed Pacific instructions. He did what Jesus told him to do. And he received his sight. My God, my God. Simple saints. Let's hear Jesus. Let's follow his instructions. And let's receive our healing. Oh yes, oh yes. It's just as simple as that. Just as simple as that. Jesus Christ loves us today, saints. He, he wants us to operate in a spirit of trust and faith in him. Oh, I, I know things are going on around us and it's trying to take us off of the faith and it's take, trying to take us off of the trust. But if we trust in him with all our heart, his word will manifest itself in our lives. Come on, I'm a witness to it. He has manifested himself in my life on many occasions. On many occasions. Saints of God, God loves you more than you'll ever know. I know we think we know. We know how much he loves us. We think we know, but we really don't. We really don't. 
His love for us is insurmountable. It's unsearchable. Come on. So that's why it's important for us to realize who and what our medicine is. Who is our medicine? Jesus Christ. What is our medicine? His word, faith, trust. All those things are prescriptions for us to walk in our supernatural divine healing, our supernatural divine peace, our supernatural divine joy. That's right, yes, joy. And, and, and I believe I mentioned this last week in Bible study, and I'm getting ready to come to a close, but I remember I mentioned this last week in Bible study about with this presidential election. And, and, I, and I mentioned, God told me to mention it, even which way it goes, this world is still heading for some serious time, crucial time. Now we see we have a um, presidential elect now. According to the records, according to the numbers, Mr. Joe Biden has won the electoral votes and he's uh, the elected president. But watch this. We can't put our faith and trust in him. We can't put our faith and trust in Kamala Harris. We thank God for him. We thank God for their success. But watch this. Our trust has got to be in Jesus. Our trust has got to be in God Almighty. We got to trust that he is going to bring us through any situation that's going to confront us. We got to trust that he's going to make a way out of no way. Even when it seems like we have no answers to our situations or to our problems, we got to make ourselves available to God so that he can manifest his self in us but if we're not obedient and if we're not walking by faith how can we make ourselves available to him we're just in our own flesh our eyes are being blinded by the by the uh, uh, the, the God of this world the scripture said he's blinding the mind of the, the the mind of those of this world with his rhetoric and with his uh deceitfulness Yes, the devil is the God of this world. Now, God created the world, but thanks be unto Adam and Eve again, they rendered the earth to the devil by falling victim to his deception. But watch this. Jesus Christ came. Now, he came and put us back into position where we have authority once again on this earth. You and I, the believer, we have authority now, again. We can call the thing that be not as though it were. We can speak to the blind eyes and they open. We can uh, talk to the, uh, the, the lame and the, the deaf and, and the ears are unstopped and the lame are able to walk because Jesus Christ has given us that power and authority on earth to be fruitful and multiply, just like God had gave it to Adam and Eve, to be fruitful and multiply. It has been restored. We have been reconciled back to God. Let's utilize that inheritance, saints. Speak to your situation. Speak to your circumstances. Speak to your finances. Speak to your family. Speak to your loved ones. Speak to your job. Whatever it is, open up your mouth and speak to them. It's time to take your medicine. It's time to walk in supernatural deliverance, supernatural healing, supernatural favor with God. How many of you know we got favor with God? Yes, we do. We have favor with God. I want you to understand, I believe as of right now, we may be closing in this series. God may have something else to say in reference to us taking our medicine. And I'm sure he will because he showed me something maybe maybe the next couple of weeks I might share with you about medicine as well. Even in the Old Testament how certain individuals Jesus, uh, God healed by them applying medicine. Whether it was a sap or a balm or some type of herbal uh, healing Soothing, and even in the um, New Testament, he tells uh, us. Now, I don't, I don't tell people to drink wine and all that stuff. But he has it there in the scripture. He said, "You drink a little wine for the the soothing of your stomach." 
that's a type of medication. But it's not to be used abusively. But there are some things that Jesus has said in the New Testament that we can do. And it's not necessarily him laying hands, but it's certain things we can do to apply to ourselves for relief and comfort. But the most important one is your blessed oil. Trust in that blessed oil as if it was prescribed from heaven on high. And you know if it's coming from heaven, it's going to work. You know if it's coming from heaven, it's going to be just what you need. So saints of God, I thank God for you. As I stated before, we're going to, we're going to deal with some more of this. It's time to take your medicine. But I pray that you heard what God was saying to you today. And like I said, some of us, we need our spiritual eyes open. This individual had to deal with a natural condition. But how many of you know some people are dealing with spiritual blindness? If you get mad at the man of God that tells you you're healed and tells you you're blessed and you're more than a conqueror, and you're always above and never beneath. If you have a problem with that, you have a spiritual blind problem. See, because, and see, this Pharisees, they, they had that problem. See, that's why I don't, I don't say that to get, condemn anybody or to make anybody feel bad, but what I, I'm not talking down on anybody, but what I'm saying is it happens. But once you realize that maybe you've been spiritually blind, and haven't been receiving what God has to told you in his word, then you pray for your spiritual eyes to be open. That's all. See, the scribes and Pharisees, Jesus Christ was right there, but they were spiritually blind. They couldn't hear his sayings. They couldn't hear his parables. They, couldn't, they, they just couldn't get it because they were spiritually blind. But here's the fault. They didn't recognize their spiritual blindness enough to know that they needed to see. See, once you come into the knowledge, say, okay, God, I, had it, I haven't saw it that way. Or I haven't heard it that way. You know what? I'm going to open up my heart to receive this word. And watch this. Now your spiritual blindness or your spiritual understanding will be open, illuminated. See, that's what it's about, say. It ain't about uh, if you are blind, you stay blind. No. The scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees had an opportunity to open up their eyes, to open up their understanding, but they just couldn't hear the truth. If you don't hear the truth, there's a blindness somewhere there. So I encourage you to talk to God. Say, God, if I'm, if, when Pastor Mount, like say I'm healed, but yet I'm, I'm dealing with this sickness or I'm dealing with this pain, open up my eyes and my understanding to see and to receive that word of healing. See, the devil, he don't want you to receive the word of healing. He wants you to uh, trust in your ailment. He wants you to trust in your pain and your sickness. But see, once you receive the word of truth, once you receive the word of God, open up your heart to receive it into your spirit. And I guarantee you, your spiritual eyes will become open. You'll be able to see what the word of God is saying. You'll be able to hear what the word of God is saying. And not only that, you'll be able to experience it. Just like this man experienced it in the natural, his deliverance, his, his, his healing, you'll be able to experience it in the spirit. So listen, saints, I gotta go. I'm, I, my time is up. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. I'm not out of scripture, but it is my time to go. And I pray that God has said something today that has blessed your heart, that has encouraged you, that has given you strength, edified you, and built you up because that's what it's all about. I'm never here to tear anybody down or to discourage anybody. That's not my job. My job is to infuse you with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. And it's good news that you're healed. It's good news that you're delivered. It's good news that you're set free. It's good news that you're prosperous. It's good news that your family is well blessed and highly favored. That's good news. In spite of what's going on around you, God's got your back.
Let us pray. Father, I thank you once again for your word. Thank you, God, for this series. It's time to take your medicine. And Father, we're going to continue to take our medicine. We're going to feed off that word. We're going to trust that word. We're going to walk by faith and not by sight, Father, so your word can manifest itself in our lives, our families' lives, on our jobs, in our homes, wherever we may go, Father, that our light may shine and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Now, Father, we thank you for the words spoken. We thank you for the words heard. Bless these, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, saints of God, if someone has been listening to this broadcast and you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to receive him unto yourself. He said he in no wise will cast you out if you come to him. He said they that call in the book of John, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he also says in Romans 10 and 9, he said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is your opportunity to give your heart to the Lord. You've been living a wild lifestyle. You've been out there carrying on and just, just running amok. God said no. And all that energy, watch this, all that energy you use out there in the world, you can bring that same energy in the kingdom of God and be just as powerful in the kingdom of God as you are in the world. God said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So listen, won't you repeat this prayer after me? Will you do that? Will you uplift your hands unto the Lord as a sign of surrender? And repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you just as I am. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, I believe that he died and you raised him from the dead just for me. I make that Jesus, the Christ, the Lord of my life. From this moment on, I yield my will to your will. Thank you, Father, for hearing me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, beloved. God bless you. We love you with the love of Christ. If you believe that prayer in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, the Bible says you are saved. Now what you need to do is be filled with the Holy Ghost, be baptized in water, amen, and find you a good Bible-based church. And we declare and we decree today that New Horizon Baptist Church is a good Bible-based church. We believe his word and we stand on his word, trusting that he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to that power that worketh in us. So until we meet again, come experience the love and the power of God. God bless you.